right, let's see if we can get these records to actually delete. So hopefully you made an attempt and just tried to see, you know, how do I get this thing to delete? But it follows a very similar pattern. On the wait list, as we're, as we're uh, looking at that button, Oh, that's not going to let us because I, all right, let's, let's comment that out for a second. Run this again. So on the wait list, as I click on this button, I have to indicate which record is it. There's, there's five rec or yeah, five records here on this form on this table. Um, how do I know which one I'm deleting now on the edit? We're passing that number so that it knows which one to delete. So, same exact concept. I'll uncomment that and then we'll go out to the wait list and on the delete button, I'm gonna pass to the ASP route an ID, whoops, hyphen ID, and then I'm gonna set that equal to, same exact thing, um, x dot application ID, okay? So that's going to be what I pass in to this route. Sorry, a little formatting issue there. So I pass in the ID to the route. And then on the home controller side, now I'm going to set it up and say, receive that ID in. Now, once I have this um, ID, I can go select a specific record that I want to be deleted. And um, so on the, the get action of the delete form, so this is going to be our HTTP get action, I want to take that ID and do the exact same thing I did up here, load up the record to delete, or whatever we want to call it. And by the way, as, as we talk about something called design patterns in terms of how people write these um, so there's a specific format for doing .NET or writing Java programs or writing Python programs. And so they're not rules that the, the program cares about, but they're rules that humans have come up with to make it more readable. And so usually I'm always encouraging names like record to delete that are very descriptive. And I don't think it's bad to use them. But as you see people develop in .NET, because you can see our methods are usually pretty simple. They're not a bunch of code typically that's hard to read. Then we end up using a lot more names like X or something because we can see exactly what it's doing just by looking at it. And so not that I'm encouraging you to do that, but um, just as you're looking at other people's programs, that happens a lot. We don't use a lot of descriptive variables as much in this type of uh, .NET app. Now in C Sharp, just alone console apps, then yeah, we're going to do that because we write a lot of code. But you can see that the snippets here end up being pretty small, which is why when I, in the past when I have taught this course, I never taught C Sharp. I just figured people could get in and figure this out because it's not very much. But uh, anyway, so I'm going to go to the context file, the applications, and then in there, I'm going to go pull a single record. And the single record is going to be and I know it's a single record, by the way. How do I have confidence in that? Because I'm using the primary key. And so it can only ever be a single record or there's something wrong with my data. And so I'm gonna go pull the application ID and that's gonna get me again one record. And the result of this, if I hover over this, the var is gonna turn into an application um, because that's what comes out of this. So we're gonna get one application and then I can say, uh, return the view and the view I want to return is going to be this record to delete or not the view sorry but the, what I want to pass to the view is this record to delete that I've just created the view itself I didn't specify so it's going to default to the delete view that we've created and so let's go see if we if that works all right so I view the waitlist I want to go delete the 21 year old George Michael delete and it says confirm deletion Bluth George Michael delete. Now, of course, it's going to crash because we don't do anything. But if I run it again, oh, sorry, <laughs> I got ahead of myself. Okay, so view the wait list and I say delete 
And if I say cancel now, it should take us back to the waitlist, which it does. Okay, so how do I get it now to actually delete when I click on this button? Um, so that's our, because we created a little form and because there's a post method, we can call the HTTP post and this can be a public I action result. Do you see how this is like, it's, yeah, no doubt about it, it's complicated, but it gets repetitive and then, um, you know, similar principles and it, it gets to a point where it's not too bad because you're just used to doing it. You just know after a little while this is an action and it can take, you know, input and how do we load up a little record and it's really a, a, a good, in my mind, intuitive way of programming with tons of tools available to you. All right, so on the post action, we're going to be given as a result of that, what? And I guess that's a great question. What is it that we're gonna be getting as a result? And because it's a post method, we're gonna be receiving from that um, record that was passed in. So we, we generate here an application we tie that to the form, that's the model on the form. So when we call the post, what we're gonna get, be getting back is, a, is an application, right? That's the model that comes out of the form. And we can give it whatever name we want to. Again, a lot of times they do this. Um, you can take those suggested hints, if that makes sense to you, you can name it something different if you want to. But then the code to actually delete is we call the, the context file, our instance of the database. And we say, well, actually, we want to uh, go to the applications table and we want to remove a specific record. And which record is it that we want to remove? It's giving you all sorts of hints here. It's whatever was just passed in. That's the one we want to remove. So then, like we've done with the other parts, we need to, after we've done that, save changes. Now, you might say, why not just save changes? Sometimes we go get that record and we make a decision and we will do that with if statements and whatnot to check to see does it have the right data in or whatever. And then if so, then we save the changes. So two different steps. This is, this is to set up the action temporarily without making it permanent in the database. So maybe you'd say, you know, make the, make the change in the virtual database in C sharp, but not confirm it in the actual database until we know we're ready. Um, and then after we've saved these changes, what do we want to do? Well, same idea, right? We want to return, redirect to action, and the action we want to go to is the waitlist, right? We want to go back to where we came from in the waitlist to make sure that uh, we can see those changes. So let me run this. So view the waitlist. Now I go into delete this 21 year old George Michael Bluth, delete. All right, so I get an error, unexpected, by the way. The property has a temporary value while attempting to change the entity state to deleted. Either set a permanent value explicitly or ensure the database is configured to generate values for this property. I don't actually know what this means. All right, let's see if we can solve it. And that's the big thing. Just don't be afraid of these errors. Like you get them all the time. Let's just go in and, and figure it out. So applications remove that entry. Um, did we pass it? Which one we're we're working that we that we want to delete? Let's, let's see what we got here. So if I put a stop here before I remove it and let's see what actually came through and run this again. Uh, so view the wait list, go to that last one, delete, delete. Then let me look at this application that we're deleting and see what it has. And interestingly enough, Application ID is zero, age is zero. Well, all this is zero, There's, it's not loaded up. All right, we gotta figure that out in the next video. One last cliffhanger for this series, Spencer. Series, right, not, uh, 
What do I say? This set of videos. One last cliffhanger for this set of videos. Spencer out.